All right, so here we are with Tucker. He just got out of the crate. He got some water. Now we're gonna let him outside to use the bathroom. Anytime that you go outside to use the restroom, try um, always make your dog wait at those door frames, especially in the beginning stages. Helps out with that impulse control and respect for those boundaries. Um, if they're just charging out that door, that's those dogs that are just going to bum rush as soon as they see an opening. All right, Tucker. Sit. Good. I'm gonna wait for his focus up to me, not the door frame. If he lays down, I'm gonna step into his face. I don't want him to get lazy on me. Good, I'm gonna mark it with that good. And I'm gonna, no, we're not going, I know we've been focusing on those. Tucker, good. Good. Tucker, sit. Good. Keen. Good job, buddy. So you can see that that might happen with your puppy or dog in general, but they'll start offering up another behavior. So we're gonna focus on some sit work in this training session. We'll let him go to the bathroom. As soon as he goes to the bathroom, we're gonna praise him. You can see monkey grass gets him distracted as most puppies will. So just try and encourage your puppy to move around with you. So wood distracted them, so I'm going to take that away from them. We want to ensure that we're going outside, it's bathroom time, it's not play time. Good boy, good boy Tuck, and a lot of big praise. Good job buddy, who's a good boy, good job, that's it Tuck Tuck. Oh boy. Come on. And then we'll bring him right back in. Yeah, good job, buddy. We can also practice him making him sit and wait here. Sit. Good. Tucker. Good job. It's a good boy. I know it's hard to sit on these slippery floors, but you can do it. Good job. So as you can see, Tucker was um, a little bit sloppy with those sits. He wanted to just lay down. And that can definitely tend to happen with a dog if you've been focusing on a certain behavior. We've definitely been working on drop downs a lot with Tucker, increasing his downstay ability. So we're just going to do a couple sit drills, making him sit and wait. We're only going to release him if he's holding that. If he does go down and then back up to his sit, I'm going to release him, but I'm not going to reward him with this toy. Also including toy and tug in your training is a very valuable training tool for your dog. Um, it builds some drive, motivation, ensures your dog is having fun with their training and that they're not being just food reliant. Now you can see that he's biting my hand. Puppies do this. I'm not making a big deal about it. I'm not moving my hand around. I'm gonna move this toy around instead and move it away from him. So I'm gonna do that. If I just go, oh no, don't do this, it's gonna tap into his prey drive even more. He's been up for a nap, so he's definitely a little bit spunkier right now. So first, we're gonna get that toy back from him. I'm gonna put my hand on each side of his mouth and stop tugging. And as soon as he drops it, I'm gonna mark it with that. Good. Tucker, sit, good. I'll take a few steps away. If he starts to move in and break it, I'll just step into his space. Keep, yeah, there we go, get it boy. That toy. Good boy. And a soft squeaky toy like this is great. That squeak taps into their prey drive. How the squeak works is it deflates and inflates. So that's kind of like an animal dying. I know that sounds bad, but it really taps into your dog's prey drive. Good job. Good. We're going to do that again. Good. Keen. Since I didn't ask him to sit, and that's what we're trying to focus on right now. Sit. Good. I'll take a few steps away. Move around. He goes to break it. Good. Step into his space. He's not getting lazy like he was at the door. Could have been the texture. King! Yeah! And I'm being unpredictable when I release him. So sometimes I'm facing him. Sometimes my back is turned. Don't be so predictable that your dog's going to figure out when you're going to be releasing them. 
Good job. Get it, buddy. Good job. Good. Sit. Good. Hey, what's up? How's it going? Good. Hey, what's up? How's it going? Try and talk out loud so that way you're not just in dog training mode. Try and even go out of sight from your puppy. Good. Get it. Yes, there we go. Get it, buddy. Good job. Good boy. What do you do? What do you do? Another way to utilize the treat and train is when you're um, desensitizing your dog to being brushed. So you can dispense while you're brushing your dog. So if he does go back to turn and bite the brush, which most puppies do, I'm not going to pull that brush away. So right now he's kind of interested. I'm gonna hold it steady there. Once he loses focus, good. I'll mark and then I'm gonna reward and start brushing him again. We don't want a puppy to learn that them biting the brush moves it away, because then it's always gonna be a battle. We really want them enjoying being brushed. She's obviously preoccupied right now with that treat and train. Good. And I'm just gonna continue to brush him. Doing this periodically throughout the week will ensure less and less use of the treat and train. Good boy, Tuck. Thank you. That's Patty. So when I do the side sits here with Tucker, you can see his body is a little bit crooked. He's struggling. This time he's not getting it. I'm applying a little bit of leash pressure and he's still not getting it. So I decided just to walk him around. You want to ensure if your dog doesn't completely understand, you're not applying more pressure. Work with just that thumb and pointer or that pinky and that ring finger. And then we took a little walk break, got his mind right, did it again, and a lot of praise here. Tucker, here. Good. 